Hey guys, welcome to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangie. I'm Jack. And today we have with us our good friend Mike. And he is very knowledgeable on primitive living and survival. And he's got some things that he is going to share with us and in turn share with y'all. Yeah, Mike is, uh, he has a YouTube channel that he's just now starting uh, called Wilderness Survival Simplified, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, Mike is a really good friend of ours. He has been teaching bushcrafting uh, for several years, and uh, especially with, with, with the youth and mm -hmm. with kids. And so he's gonna show us some of those survival mm -hmm. skills on this video and maybe another couple of videos as well. Mm -hmm. You got anything to say about it? No. Let's have fun. <laughs> Let's have fun. What makes your garden grow water and sunshine? Okay, guys, so what we're going to be doing is some, uh, I guess, wilderness baking, right? Yes, sir. Or survival baking. Yeah. And what are we going to cook? Biscuits. Biscuits. So if you're out and you're hungry, uh, we're going to use, what, all food storage items, stuff that you could preserve in your pantry and have with you out in the wilderness and use all those same ingredients to, to cook and, and eat. Or even a grid down situation where you have to, no electricity, no power, this is a great way to to bake and to have food. All right, so we're gonna get on it. We, uh, one of the first things you wanna do in any survival situation, uh, instead of having to try to build something and do a lot of work and put forth a lot of effort, you wanna find something that nature has already made. And one of the things that we wanna do, and one of the best ways that I know to cook in the wilderness is to use what they call a keyhole fire. And uh, uh, so what I want is I'm looking for something just around like the head of a key, but then how the key comes down, that little spot that comes down is what we're gonna use for our cooking basis. And uh, look around, you'll always find some kind of indentation or uh, spot around that pretty much has everything done for you. You just might have to tweak it just a little bit and you can use a sharp stick, you can use if you have a shovel with you, uh, even a knife. You know, I wouldn't recommend using a knife, but in a survival situation, you have to do what you, you, know, what you have to do. Here we find the little indent and uh, it's a great little spot. And the uh, only thing we really have to do is just come out uh, maybe here just a little bit with a uh, keyhole indention and then we'll get a fire. I think today, we're, instead of building a fire and actually using coals, we're just gonna use some charcoal to kind of demonstrate the, uh, the, the it have the same effect as uh, using coals. Uh, but with the keyhole fire, you just mainly wanna cook with coals. You don't wanna cook over open flame, because especially if you're baking, you wanna make sure that you have a good ambient temperature and something that you can manipulate if you have to, by either raking more coals in or raking coals out, or even lifting up your pot. Um, to be able to get a good temperature where it thoroughly bakes all the way through. Okay. Uh, one of the things with the keyhole fire is, if you can see, here's the head and here's the key. The size of your key uh, is dependent upon what you're using it for. Uh, we're just using a little pot, uh, so I don't want a wide area that's going to cause to have more uh, loss of heat. I want to try to condense that heat to one small spot as much as I can. Now, a lot of times what you can do, and you'll see uh, it being taught, is they'll make a trench maybe like this, this size for a pod or something like that. And then over here, maybe make one that's a little bit wider uh, where you can put green sticks on, uh, maybe like oak or hickory, and you can actually cook on top of them. You can use that for a grate. And, uh, uh, you know, and that would be something we could definitely show in the future. But the whole purpose of this right here is, uh, and we'll, we'll show you here in just a moment with the pot, but we want to, if you was doing this out in the wilderness, you'd have your fire here, and as the coals burn down, you would just rake your coals in, and you'd base everything off of this, uh, their heat and how quick that you wanted to cook or how slow you want to cook. So if I wanted more coals, I'd pull them in. If I wanted less coals, I would pull them out. And that, that will allow you a good ambient temperature. You want to go deep enough that it, uh, it's not right on top of your pot, but yet you don't want to go so deep that you lose all the heat. And so one of the reasons of having a small uh, area, a small key, uh, is it contains the heat a lot easier and a lot better. So uh, we'll get this uh, finished up and get it set up and show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay guys, so for you, I am going to make from food storage a garlic chive cheese biscuit. And Mike is gonna cook it over there uh, in his stove. So uh, I'm gonna try to do this from an off-grid perspective. Uh, so 
everything that I have is from food storage and I'm not going to measure anything. I'm going to eyeball it. Okay. Uh, so in this jar, I just have some uh, all purpose flour. And since we're just making a biscuit, I'm going to do that's about a cup, I guess. And no, that's about a half a cup. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of salt. This is just pink Himalayan sea salt. Uh, I've got some baking soda here. Uh, we're just going to do a little tiny pinch of that. Yes, all of this is from food storage. I've got some aluminum free baking powder. We're going to do just a tiny pinch of that. And I've got some uh, garlic powder. Whew. I've got some garlic powder. I ordered this uh, uh, in bulk from Amazon. This is uh, organic. And I really like garlic. So we're going to go maybe about a half a teaspoon there. Yeah. Uh, these are some dehydrated uh, chives that we grew in our garden. That's going to give it a really nice onion flavor. And then for cheese, for a shelf stable option, we're going to use nutritional yeast. It's not really cheese, but it gives it a cheese flavor. Plus it's loaded in vitamins and minerals. Even in an off grid situation, you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of nutrition. So you have the energy to do all the foraging and primitive living necessary. And I'm going to go kind of heavy, maybe about a teaspoon there because I really love cheese flavor. Okay. And then for our fat, um, I'm going to use, this is just uh, bacon grease that we've saved, but um, some other good shelf stable options would be um, ghee. Ghee is a really great option. Uh, lard, tallow, not tallow. Uh, anyway, that's, that's probably about a half a teaspoon there. And then for our liquid, um, I have some evaporated milk. Again, this is shelf stable. You could also use uh, powdered milk with some water or if you just have to use water, just use water. That's what they did back in the Great Depression anyway. All right, so I'm going to start with just a little bit. And if you've ever made a biscuit, you kind of know what you're looking for. You want all the ingredients to come together. And here in a second, we're going to have to get our hands in here. But we're just looking for this to come together and not be too wet or too sticky. But if you're really hungry, you're going to eat it no matter what it comes out like. Okay, I don't know if anybody's keeping up. That's probably, I've probably done a couple of tablespoons there already. All right, here we go. It's coming away from the sides. This looks just about perfect. I think we're going to go uh, kind of drop biscuit style because I don't really have a surface to flour. And again, we're just we just want to eat something and it doesn't have to be perfect. So, but this looks awfully, awfully good. All right, I am going to use my hands just to kind of get this all together. And then I'm going to let Mike take over from here. Today we're using just a regular old uh, bush pot. And uh, uh, this actually is a Pathfinder's uh, pot. And uh, I'm in no affiliation with them, but I do highly recommend if you want to spend the money uh, to go with Pathfinders. It's a, a company by Dave Canterbury, and uh, a lot of people might know him. He's a great guy and uh, a great instructor when it comes to survival and outdoor wilderness. But what you want is you want to find something that uh, you've got a good lid on because you want to try to get as tight of a seal as you can. Now, this one has a pore spout, but that's okay. And secondly, you want to have some type of great that you can set in and what that does is just provides a little lift uh, for the the for the cooking process of it now you can also take if you've got like a metal can a coffee can uh, and you can find something to set in here to do this with just cover the front of it with tin foil anything like that will work you don't have to go out and spend the money for something like this to be able to do it like I said if you got any type of metal can that uh, that you can find a um, just a, some type of grate to put in there because you're not going to have food on this directly. You're always going to have something on it, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, and then something that you can cover with, like I said, aluminum foil, tin foil. But today we're just going to use the lid that come with the bush pot. Uh, as we talked about a while ago with the keyhole fire, uh, we want to make sure that we've got a deep enough area and wide enough area where the pot will set on. So the pot's just going to sit just like this right here. And uh, we want to rake our coals. And as we said earlier, we're using charcoal just for the sake of demonstration. But if you built a fire, 
uh, you would take your coals when they get about like that right there and you'd rake them in. So we're going to go on and do that and we're going to get this preheated uh, to cook the biscuits that uh, Tangy has made. So I'm just going to pull some of these in here and let them get uh, in the right area because I want my heat centered right here in this plot. Spread them out just a little bit more. Maybe throw another one in here to get up there because I want to make sure the heat is even, uh, evenly dis uh, distributed. But with this right here, it would cook for a long time. So you can actually do, you know, more than just one. So we're going to put our uh, piece in there, our grid. Make sure the lid's on good and set it on there. Let it preheat. We'll come back and uh, we'll put aluminum foil on top of the grate and then put the biscuit on there and uh, let it get to cooking. One of the things that we want to make sure is try to, and, and it's not always going to be possible, you want to try to keep the coals from touching the pot if there's any way possible. Now, one of the things you can do, you could actually take a rock and put it on each side of here and just kind of set that on top of it. Uh, you know, you might not want your hole as deep or you might want more coals in there. Uh, and there might be times that it has to touch just a little bit, but you want to try to get enough air in there. That way, if, uh, if the air is not blown, you can blow some air in there to heat it up to get it cooking a little bit hotter. Um, and you can see the, the coals are right there, uh, the pot sitting on it. I can just blow just a little bit and it'll heat it up just a little bit more. And uh, it, it, It's all based on how you want to cook it and how quick you want to cook it. Uh, and you know, you can use a Dutch oven for this, you can use anything. This is for those that may not have a Dutch oven or have not uh, uh, had an opportunity to grab something like that. This is just a great, simple way to do it. Uh, what we're doing now is just going to take the, uh, you, want, you want to put the biscuit on here. Put it on there just like that. Raise this up. Now be careful because it will be hot. lid on it now be careful the lid had cool but just be careful when you're doing that we're going to set it back on there and we'll check it every few minutes and see how it's coming along normally we let this keep cooking we're going to check on it just for a little bit because we can't wait let you see the progress of it uh, the only thing is be careful because it is hot i don't know if i can touch it without a pair of gloves or something but it's getting there so slowly turn it around a little bit This is not a quick process, but it's a process that does work. And we'll bring you back when it's when it's done. Okay. It's been about 15 minutes. We're just going to check it real quick to see how that it's doing. Oh yeah, it's not done yet, but still likes a little bit. But uh, using the old-fashioned oak limb when you got a toothpick. We, uh, uh, our biscuit is done. We'll show you here in just a minute. But I want to show you if you wanted to make a, a little platform where you can cook stone. The coal's a little high. As you can see, we built a fire uh, to go in and do it. But this is the idea of pulling the coals in. You can actually set this up here on that. Keep it off the coals. Uh, you can cook meat, steak, fish, whatever, right on top of them twigs right there. The only thing you want to make sure is it's green. And you want to use the type of tree that you feel safe with uh, using for cooking. Uh, oak, hickory, something of that nature. Now, let's check the biscuit. We're going to take it over here and see what we got. Oh. There we go. Alright, just to be sure, we're going to check out the middle here. Woo! Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. All right. So who, you gonna, Mike, you gonna come over here and take some? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm putting fire out. Okay. This is the best part, you get to break bread. Break bread. That's all right. They done it daily. That's all right. Oh, that's right. the way. Really good. Oh, it smells really good. Mm, yeah. I'd eat that all days, every day of the week. It's not bad. How is it? Could use a little bit more salt, but it's good.
hope you guys learned something or that maybe you were at least entertained. <laughs> but um, do you have anything you want to add? No, I'm trying to chew. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. So um, anyway, let us know in the comments section, have you ever done anything like this? Uh, do you have any tips that you could add to share with uh, other folks? And yeah, that's all. that's all we've got for you guys today. Until next time, remember to be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared. God bless. Bye, guys. What makes your garden grow? Water and sunshine. What makes your spirit grow? Love.